Hey, Bob. So I'm going to do a summary of the oak sawdust pasteurizing technique that we talked about the other day on WhatsApp. Um, so you want to grab your sawdust and you want to hydrate it to field capacity. And hydrating it to field capacity, if you remember, means you can grab a handful of the stuff and squeeze it as hard as you can and only one drop of water comes out. And it's important that it's it really is one drop if you get a stream or you get five drops or you get no drops whatsoever um, you want to spend a bit more time trying to get it right to that level by either by adding more water or a bit more sawdust and mixing it thoroughly the range that mushroom mycelium at least oyster mushroom mycelium grows in is very very fine if it's too dry then that means or that will uh, favor mold growth. And if it's too wet, then the water fills up a lot of the space in between the sawdust particles um, and pushes out the oxygen, creating an anaerobic environment. In anaerobic environments, bacteria will flourish. So it's really important to try and get that, um, to try and get the moisture content like right, right in the middle there. Um, you're going to want to use boiling water, so boil some water and you're going to slowly pour it in and that helps pasteurize it, uh, pasteurize the sawdust a little bit. It's not going to sterilize it, but it'll kill off uh, enough of the microbes so that the oyster, mice, oyster mushroom mycelium will have a pretty good chance of uh, being able to myceliate through uh, that substrate. Um, Okay, so you've got your sawdust, you've added the boiling water, you've tested for field capacity, then you need to let it cool down. If mycelium gets at, reaches or goes above 35 degrees Celsius, it just dies. So after adding all the water and testing for field capacity, you want to let it cool down to room temperature. So if you're doing it in a Tupperware or a bag or something like that, you're going to want to put the lid on it, seal it up completely to not let any stuff go in um, or to try and minimize the amount of stuff, par particles, mold spores, whatever, uh, while it's cooling down. Another thing that I should have mentioned at the start is while you're doing this whole process, it's best, A, to, if you have a mask, put on a mask. Um, and whether or not you're wearing a mask during this or not, don't speak. Don't speak. Um, try not to cough over it. Definitely try not to sneeze over your work area. Um, yeah, when I'm in the lab doing lab work, I'm always wearing a mask. And if I'm doing it with, uh, with my employee, we are minimizing the amount that we're talking to each other. And if we do need to talk to each other, it's never while we're actually working with any of the substrate. And we'll typically turn away from our workspace as well. Given that this is a low-tech method and we're not doing a sterile technique, it doesn't matter as much. And that being said, the more precautions that you take in having as a uh, having as clean of a process or clean of as as clean of a technique as possible, the higher your chances of success. So after it's cooled down, you're going to want to inoculate the um, oak sawdust with some spawn. And the spawn that you choose is up to you. So you can use your cardboard spawn when it's ready. You can use break open a, a grow kit and use the my, sawdust mycelium right in the middle. Uh, but either way, if you're going to use the cardboard spawn, you're going you're going to want to make layers. So a little bit of the substrate, layer of cardboard, substrate, cardboard, and you're going to want to make a lasagna like that. If you are going to use the uh, the sawdust from inside a grow kit block, you're going to crumble it into whatever. Uh, container that you have the sawdust in, whatever container that you're going to incubate the the uh, sawdust in. 
So I guess it's probably good to talk about the containers. You can use uh, you can use a Tupperware. You can use a Rubbermaid bin. You can use a like a five gallon bucket with a lid on it. Um, you could even use uh, you can use a large Ziploc bag. Um, the first mushrooms that I ever grew were in a used newspaper sleeve. A used plastic new newspaper sleeve. It actually makes for a, a really really convenient size. Um, okay, so you have the container, you have your substrate, you've spawned it. Okay, so now you need to keep it in a warm environment without any light for two to three weeks. The ideal temperature is 21 to 22 degrees Celsius in complete darkness. Um, put it in a box, like, I'm sure you can find a spot somewhere in your house that meets those, those criteria. And as much as possible, I was going to say, like, don't open it, peek at it, but, like, that's probably some of the funnest parts is, uh, is doing just that. So, anyways. Um, okay, so I'm going to try editing this now. Yeah, I'm going to try editing this.